praise God. Yeshua Amashia, Lion of Judah, Agule Chimba, Yeshua. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we give you praise, O God. Thank you, Lord, because your word is spirit and they are alive. Thank you because our spirit man is open up to receive from you. And we give you praise because the entrance of your word, it gives light and it gives understanding unto the simple. Be magnified, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you have by any means, reach out to your neighbor, say to your neighbor, neighbor, you are welcome. Let's have our seat in God's presence. I want to thank God's servant for the privilege to bring God's word to God's people uh, today. Okay, still in the theme of the month, Aya Grant, we are going to be considering a topic. Who shall ascend to God's Aya Grant? Who shall ascend to God's higher ground. Praise the name of the Lord. Technically, if you can help me, let's open to the book of Psalm 24, verse 3 to 5. Verse 20, Psalm 24, verse 3 to 5. Last week, we were able to build that, you know, there are different dimensions by which you can go to higher ground. We discovered that, you know, God can make you to go to higher ground. We also said that, you know, the devil can make a platform for you to go to higher ground. And we said that individually by your self-will, you can decide to go to higher ground. But you know, last week we were able to conclude and say that it is better to wait on God's higher ground for you to be able to ascend it. And now we want to see God has qualifications, criteria for you to be able to ascend his own higher ground. And therefore, let's read Psalm 24, verse 3 to 5. Bible says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Verse 4. It says, He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Verse 5. And Bible says, He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. And therefore, when you look at it, 
just like every one of us that apply to become either a PR or a citizen or student permit, there is a criteria for you to be granted that particular access. The same thing God is making us to understand. Despite the fact that it has been established that God's higher grant is the best for you, it comes with no sorrow. It does not do any variableness when granting his own higher grant. There is a criteria for you to come to it. Praise the name of the Lord. And those are some of the things that we are going to be considering. What are the criteria that God look out for when he's granting somebody to come to higher ground? What are the provisions that God make available for you to when you get to that higher ground? What are the responsibility as an individual that I need to do? Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, let's get down to the criteria. What are the things that God consider? What are the things that God consider? When we look at that Psalm 24, verse 4a, it says that it must have a clean hands and must have pure hearts. Clean hands and what? Pure hearts. And therefore, God is making us to understand that my hands must be clean. My heart must be pure. Bible makes us to understand when you open to the book of Psalm 78, verse 72. Psalm 78, verse 72. And Bible says that, and David, he led them, so he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. And therefore, when you look at it, God is making us to understand who is going to ascend my own higher ground. Must be the one that has a word. Pureness in his hands and pureness in his hearts. That means whatsoever that we are seeing you doing is also being done in your own heart. Bible makes us to understand that there is a particular church. When they gave unto Paul, Paul said they first of all gave themselves to the Lord before they gave their gift to the Lord. Therefore, whatsoever that is coming out of your hands has already been purified from your heart. Therefore, it's not as what I am saying with my mouth alone, but as it's coming from my heart, it's what I'm saying with my mouth. You know, Bible makes us to understand of the thing Jesus began both to do and teach. Therefore, there is no contradiction between what God is teaching and what is inside of him. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, one of the criteria is that there must be a purity in your hands and purity in your hand. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, not lifting up your soul unto vanity. That's Psalm 24, verse 4b. Not lifting up your soul unto vanity. Therefore, I am not saying, God, let me get down to higher ground so that when I'm turning 40, I can pay the whole of city of Saskatoon red. And maybe somebody now say, hey, will you finish sending the money? I say, I will finish spending the money. Will you finish spending the money? I, you know, do you get what I'm saying now? No, that is not the whole lesson. Bible is making us to understand he that has not lifted up his soul unto vanity. And I am not becoming rich because of what? To show people in Saskatoon that you have not seen the great grandfather of party in Saskatoon. No. Bible is making us to understand he that has not lifted up his soul unto vanity. You know, Bible makes us to understand in the book of Jonah, it said that they that observe lying vanity, they forsake their own mercy. And therefore, if the whole lesson of going to higher ground is for my soul to be lifted to vanity, Bible is making me to understand that I'm going to forsake my own mercy. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, one of the things that God considers is that when God check your hearts, no Bible makes us to understand God looks all over. You know what is going on in the heart of man. And you see that there is still vanity in your own hearts. You might not be qualified for a higher ground. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's check number three. Number three. He that believes and declares God's promises or word even against popular opinion. God has given his word. But it's not coming to pass yet. Let's open our Bible to the book of Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. We're going to read from verse 6 to 10. Numbers 14, 6 to 10. And Bible says, And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. Seven. And they spoke unto all the complaining of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. Verse 8. And Bible says, If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Nine. Only rebel not yet against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Verse 10. And Bible now makes us understand. 
them, but all the congregation based on them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And therefore, when you look at this scripture, against popular opinion, two against eight, they can't win any, any, any bill in the house. They are less than two-third. But against popular opinion, God has given them that word and they stood by it. And therefore, he that God is going to call to his higher ground must be the one that despite any popular opinion, they are holding on to the word of God. The body believe it. The body declare it. Whether you like it or not, whether you like their face or not, they are believing the word of God and they are declaring those words. That's the one that God is going to call to higher ground. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. And let's quickly open to the book of Numbers chapter 14 verse 24. Numbers chapter 14 verse 24. The Bible makes us to understand. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, had follow me fully. Fully. That means another criteria for the one that God is going to call to higher ground is the one that has fully or only followed the Lord. You are not saying, oh, if God doesn't do it, I have another alternative. He said, he has fully followed me. Whether I perish, I perish. Whether I get it not or not, but I will trust you. Bible say he fully followed the Lord. That means he that God is going to call to his own higher ground must be the one that will foolishly follow the Lord. Bible makes us to understand in the book of James, James chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. I want us to open it, James chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. But let him ask in faith, not in wavering. For he that wavering is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind, and toes. Seven, Bible now makes us to understand. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Eight is my emphasis. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That means you are fully following the Lord. You are, you are saying, God, I know you will do it. And if you do not do it, you are still my God. I will never stop following after you. That means you don't have any other option. That is a person that God is going to call to his own higher ground. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. And let's get down to point number five. Oh, I think I've done number five. Okay, let's look at what makes available. What are the things that God makes available for us? What are the things that God makes available for us? You know, we said that, you know, there are things that God look out for. Just like when you become a, a maybe a citizen, there are some responsibility and there are some rights that you have as that particular person. There are rights that you have. There are things that God also makes available to you when they summon you to a higher ground. Let's open our Bible to the book of Zechariah chapter 4 verses. Zechariah chapter 4 verses. And the Bible says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. And therefore, when God summons you to his higher ground, he makes available strength by his spirit. You know, last week I was saying when you are going to, you know, prayer mountain, you will get to some steps, you know, in that prayer mountain and your lap will be shaking because the Bible is not making us to understand. Just like when you are going to the mountain of the law, the higher ground of the law, the Lord knows that you are going to need strength. You will need power. The Bible now says that it makes it available by his spirit, not by your physical flesh, not by your own physical energy. God makes available strength and mind by what? By his spirit. Number two thing that God makes available to you. If you open to the book of Joshua chapter 14, verse 6 to 11, Joshua 14, verse 6 to 11, we've read it. You know, God preserves your life so that you can see the fulfillment of that higher calling. I don't think we've read it. Let's open it. Joshua 14, 6 to 11. Joshua 14, 6 to 11. God preserves your life no matter the age that you are because he is the one that has given you that higher ground. He makes sure that you will see the fulfillment. And Bible makes us understand that the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal and Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kezan and said unto him, that knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses the man of God concerning me and thee in Kadesh Baniel. 
40 years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out of the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Eight, nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people mad. But I only followed the Lord. And Bible says, and Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thy inheritance, and thy children forever, because thou hast only followed the Lord thy God. Number 10, and I say, and now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. As he said these 40 and 5 years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses. And that's one thing I want us to see. No matter the age, one thing about God is that because God lives in the realm of eternity, time is not, you know, they, they, it's not subject to time. And therefore, no matter the age that you have, God can make the fulfillment of his higher ground in your life to come to pass. And therefore, if God has given you a promise of higher ground, don't be agitated. Don't be in a hurry. It will surely make sure that you see the fulfillment. It will preserve your life. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, if God has said something concerning your children, and you are looking at, ah, will I be old enough to be able to see it? No, be relax, relax, relax. God is, he can make sure that you see those, your great, great, great grandchildren. Because if he has given you, he will make sure that he preserve your life until you see the fulfillment. Praise the name of the Lord. And let's get to number three. Number three, God provides comforts and encouragement in the process of attaining your higher ground. God provides comforts and encouragement in the process of you attaining that your what? Higher ground. If you open to the book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4, Bible says, for whatsoever things were written at four time, we are written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. Let's move down. Let's second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3 to 4. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3 to 4. Chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. Bible says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort. Verse 4. It says that who has comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort where we, we ourselves are comforted. You know, because of time, I won't read the other scripture. One thing that you are going to always see in the process of you attaining the higher than ground that God has, is promising you, you will always receive comfort. There will be encouragement. There will be, you know, I remember when I was trying to transition to, you know, a, a, a more professional job. Anytime that I apply and you get that made, I say, unfortunately. You know, I've gotten the skill that I won't look for other things. I just check. Unfortunately, sorry, don't worry too much. Unfortunately. Do you get one of the comfort that always come is from the song of Nathan Abbasi. You have a track record of keeping your wall. You not a man to stop doing it. You know when that song comes, it gives me comfort again. It encourages. One thing that God will make available to you is that when you are in that process, there will always be comfort. There will always be encouragement. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, let's get down to number four. God provides insight and wisdom for the higher ground. He provides you insight. He gives you wisdom for the higher ground. Let's open to the book of Genesis 30, 31 to 43. 30, 31 to 43. I think we have time. Let's quickly read it. And Bible makes us to understand. And he said, what shall I give thee? And Jacob said, thou shalt not give me anything. If thou will do this thing for me, I will give feed and keep thy flocks. 32, I will pass through all the flock today, remove from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my ire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come. When it shall come for my ire before thy face, everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goat and brown among the sheep, he said, that shall be counted stolen with me. 34, he said, and Laban said, behold, I will do it, might be according to thy word. 35, and he removed that day that the goat they were restricted and spotted, and all she goat they were speckled and spotted, and everyone that has some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his son. No, let's stop because of the time. You know, when you look at this, God gave Jacob, the insight and the wisdom for him to be blessed. 
It was, it was God that gave it to him. And therefore, in the process, God will tell you, no, why not write this exam first? Why not talk to this person first? Why not engage this particular person first? Because in that process, it will never leave you like somebody without father or mother. God will always send help. It will give you insight. It will give you wisdom. Number five, God brings you into favor with him and with men for that particular higher ground. One of the things that you are going to know is that God will bring you into favor. Let's open our Bible to the book of First Samuel, chapter 2, verse 26. First Samuel, chapter 2. And Bible says, And the child Samuel grew on and was with favor with, both with the Lord and also with men. You know, one thing is that as God's people, we have favor with God. But one thing is that that favor must be reciprocated into the life of men. And therefore, one of the things that God will make available to you is that there will be favor that will rest upon you. And don't forget that you don't need to have favor with all the IR manager. It's just one yes alone that you need. You don't need to have favor with all of the people you want to get license. Just one enough is okay. And once you get it, it will turn things around for you. And Bible says it's going to, when you read the book of Luke, it says Jesus also, he grew and he had favor with God and with men. One of the things that God made available is that makes available favor for you with him and also with men. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, in the next five minutes before I do conclusion, what is my own responsibility? What are the responsibilities of an individual that God is giving higher grant? If you open to the book of 2 Kings chapter 7 verse 3, 2 Kings chapter 7 verse 3, it says, and there were four leprous men at the entry in of the gates. And they said one to another, why sit we here until we die? One of your first responsibility is that you don't sit down doing nothing with the strength that God has made available. You don't sit down doing nothing. It is, it is a taboo. You don't sit down doing nothing. You must find something doing. Why you are trying to get to that your higher ground? Bible says, why sit we here? They are leper. He said, why sit we here until we die? And Bible makes us to understand they took step of faith. The same thing, you must not sit down doing nothing. With the strength, you no know God has made available his strength to all. The Bible makes us to understand, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord. And that strength that God has made available, you must not sit down doing nothing with it. You must do something. Number two, my responsibility. You take a practical step of faith towards attaining that you are at ground. You know, why do we call it practical step of faith? Bible makes us understand faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And with that step that I'm taking, I'm not taking it in the flesh. I'm taking it by the instruction that God has, what, has given unto me. And therefore, when you open to the book of that 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 4 to 8. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 4 to 8. Let's open it. And he said, if we say we will enter into this city, then the family is in the city. And we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us fall into the hands of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall both die. Verse 5. I say, and they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were coming to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Because as they were moving, the angels of God was moving their steps. And the people were hearing a host of war. Do you get what I'm saying now? Huh? And verse 6, now say, for the Lord had made the host of Syria to hear a noise of chariot and a noise of horses just for leper. Praise God. The Bible makes us understand. Even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lord, the king of Israel had hired against all the kings of the Hittite and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Praise the name of the Lord. Wherefore they arose, fled in the twilight, left their tents, their horses, their houses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore you take practical steps of faith. Number three, the comfort, encouragement, higher ground, whatsoever that God has given unto you in that process, you have received, you must give back to others. It must never stop with you. You know, whether God has given you one stop and you, you've gained it one entrance, you must not let it stop with you. When you read that same Second Kings chapter 7, 9 to 10, they were leper. Don't forget, they were leper, but their thinking was not snow. They were not leper in their thinking. 
There was no leprosy in the way they think. The Bible makes us understand. Please let me open 2 Kings chapter 7, 9 to 10. Then they said one to another, We do not wear this day. It's a day of good tidings. We hold our peace if we tarry to the morning light. Some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king's household. Number 10. And Bible now makes us understand. Number 10. So they came and called unto the porter of the city. And they told them, saying, We came to the camp of the Syria, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man, but us is tied, and us is tied, and the tent as they were. And therefore, those lepers, they said that God has done us well. We must never hide it to ourselves. Therefore, you must show. You must help other people come in. You must give those information. You must not say that, uh, you know, at times you might say, I don't even know if I say something else. Somebody might disrespect me. You know, somebody told us, he said, we believers. It was one of my brother-in-law. I said, people will be saying that uh, they, they speak roughly to me. He said, how ah, about Stephen that they stoned to death? So maybe it's what that they are talking to you that you are complaining. Somebody, they stoned him to death and he died. The same thing, and therefore you say that, uh, I don't know what they will say, if I reach out now and they did not take you away. No, you reach out. Don't let it hide with you. Give those information. Help those other young people coming behind. Praise the name of the Lord. And number four, be bold and confident to challenge hindrances to your higher ground. You know, when you read the, that Joshua chapter 14, verse 6 to 11, and Bible makes us to understand that Caleb go to, to Joshua. And say, you know that the Lord told Moses that this particular place is for me. And therefore, you must not say, oh, status quo, uh, we, I don't know. Go and challenge it. It's better you challenge and you learn in the process. That, oh, maybe you should have said it this way. But at the same time, you've registered what God has given unto you as higher ground. Praise the name of the Lord. Be bold and confident to challenge hindrances to your higher ground. Number five. You must know that strength by the spirit, wisdom, they all come by prayer and the word of God. Therefore, you must be a good student of prayer and the word of God. You no, know, we've said that God gives what? Strength. He gives wisdom by his spirit. And don't forget that strength will come what? By prayer. And that word, the insight, will come by what? By the word of God. Therefore, be a good student of the word of God. If you open to the book of Matthew chapter 22, verse 29, Matthew 22, verse 29, the Bible says that you help because you know not the scripture. Jesus answered and said unto them, you do help, not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. You know, one thing that I felt most believer is that, you know, Pastor Paul, you were sharing over the weekend. And he said that many a times when we pray, when we pray, because we are low, our low, our bank word is low. There is nothing that the Holy Spirit will use to reveal something to us. And maybe the only thing the Holy Spirit will not say, okay, let's push it, let him come for first service or come for second service. Perhaps the pastor will have a word that will reach out to the person. And therefore, as believer, you must be a good student of the word of God. You must have a daily time of prayer because those are the places that you can get your strength and you can get replenishment of wisdom. Okay, in the next few seconds, number seven. Go for good understanding in the desire I have grant. Because that's how to procure favor. If you open to the book of Proverbs chapter 13 verse 15, the Bible says good understanding procures favor. Good understanding procures what? Favor. And in conclusion, in conclusion, you know, if you open to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1, 10 to 11, because of my time, I will paraphrase. Bible makes us to understand that Anna has been going to Shiloh every day. Bible says that every year, that, oh, oh, that you will give me a song so that I can show Penina that I'm not barren. But the day a prayer point changed, and he said, give me a song, and I will give back to you. You know what it means is that God has been searching, and is looking for somebody to replace Eli with. But the day that Anna said that, I'm going to be the answer to your heart cry, oh God. That day, a higher ground became manifestation. Bible now makes us to understand in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. 1 Corinthians 15, 19. Bible says, if only in this life we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. 
I was going for prayer work and I saw that scripture and it caught my heart. If only all your higher grand desire is only in this life. Bible is saying that we are of all men most miserable. And therefore, if your higher grand is not answering to the cry of heaven, you will be on that waiting list. So if your higher grand is not answering to God's heart desire, you are going to stay long ago. Bible says, if only in this life we have hope. If only all your higher grand, God grant me peer, God has granted it. God grant me citizen, he has done it. God give me money, let me travel the world, he has done it. Bible says, if only all your heart desire is for this life, you have all men most miserable. And therefore, there must be something that is answering to the heart cry of God in our higher grand. Can we rise to our feet? Can we rise to our feet? Are we going to pray that God make me so that the blessing of my higher grant will not take me away from you?